The full-time review show is supported by and brought to you by Saltire Energy, the global market leader in specialist drilling equipment rental. And also by Craig International, who recently sponsored brand new kit bags for West End FC, an Aberdeen-based boys and girls football club. The kids, whose ages range from 6 to 19, were absolutely thrilled to receive their new bags and no doubt will put them to good use. At Pataudry on Saturday, it was another drab performance. As Peter Levenside scraped their way to a nil-nil draw against top six Dundee. So after that draw, Tony Doherty's Dundee have confirmed their position in the top six. The result meant that we stay in ninth position on 35 points. But I have to say, many congratulations to Tony Doherty, former Aberdeen assistant manager, in his first season in charge of Dundee, and obviously their first season since coming up. So many congratulations to Dundee. Hi everybody, how are you doing? A very warm welcome to Ali Beg ABTV this Monday night. Sorry I wasn't with you last night, I had family commitments and all that sort of stuff. So here we are, this is live. Um, this is your opportunity to sort of, now that you've had roughly 48 hours to think about Saturday's dire performance against Dundee, then come and have your say. We've got quite a busy show tonight. We've got lots to get through. So a little bit later, I'll be speaking to my pal Richard Wilkinson, who used to run a very prominent Aberdeen-based fan site on Facebook. He's also the owner of Beat 106 Scotland. So we had a little chat earlier today, which I'll bring to you in just a moment. And later, now this is our way, and when I say our, I also mean my sponsor, Craig International. So they have very kindly offered me four tickets to the Scottish Cup semi-final on Saturday to give away to you. When I say you, what I mean are the ABTV members. We surpassed, at the weekend, 50 members. So what I wanted to do with the approval of Craig International was to give these tickets away to those who are my members. It's my way of saying thank you for the financial commitment that you've made to me. So we've put all the names into the hat, all the names of the people who are uh, signed up to the membership scheme, and we've put them in like a spinning wheel, and we will spin that wheel a little bit later, and if you win, you win four tickets. So what I'm hoping is that you can take your partner, and kids, if you've got them, or just take three of your pals. However you however you want to do it is entirely up to you. So that's coming up a little bit later. Um, so, Saturday. First half, okay. Didn't have a problem with the first half. Disappointed we didn't take our chances. Was delighted with Jerk. Really was delighted with Jerk. So what happened to him in the second half? We saw glimpses of the Duke we love. Then we saw the Duke that has been very much in evidence this season. Hugely disappointing second half. Um, delighted we kept a clean sheet. Fair play to the back four. Thought they put in one hell of a shift. Because I thought Dundee were really coming at us. Um, overall, just really disappointed if I'm being honest. I just didn't think there was much desire. And, I, and I, I know I use the word desire a lot, but I think when you're a paying customer, and you know, there were nearly 17,000 at Pataudry on Saturday, you just want to see it, don't you? You just want to see that fight, the desire. And I just, I just didn't see enough. I didn't see enough for us to want to win that game of football. Um, and it's like what Peter said, Peter Levin said in his post-match. If we can't win, we must make sure we don't lose. And I just wondered if that mentality set in early in the second half with the way Dundee was sort of pressing us. So, look, disappointing. So we don't know what's going to happen with the split. Uh, it looks like it's now going to be next week until the fixtures are announced. But we're expecting two home games, three away games. 
Um, and obviously County surprised everybody yesterday. So I do think there's an element of us looking over our shoulder just a touch, which I discuss with Richard in just a moment. So let's remind you of the team. So Peter, it's it, it's like what I said in the, in the preview show. It's not the team I would have picked personally, but I can see why he did it. Um, so yeah, to be honest with you, for a home game, I would much prefer to see two up top because I think I, I'm starting to feel a bit sorry for Bojan because he's just chasing shadows. He really is. He puts in one hell of a shift, um, was afforded very little. And I just think if he's got a strike partner up there to bounce off, to play off, I just think he would be in a much better place. I really do. I always think we should play two up top at home. So this is what Peter actually had to say after the game. We should be up there in the top six, challenging for Europe. We're hurting right now, but it's a good clean sheet. If you can't win, don't lose it. I thought we were good overall. The tempo, the pressing, the intensity we played at, but just in front of goal, we're just a wee bit shy right now. He finished off by saying, we're pleased with a clean sheet. Another point. I'm going to take positives from that, and it's four unbeaten now. So look, I have no issues with him saying that. Um, you know, I've tried to look at the positives. It is four clean. It is four games unbeaten, and I think we've only conceded one goal during that time. So the back four is looking an awful lot more solid. I thought Angus McDonald's block midway through the second half was just sensational. I don't know how he's managed to do it, but he did. He stuck his left foot out and somehow stopped a, a goal-bound effort. So I'm very comfortable with the back four because I do think they are looking solid. Um, it's just further up the pitch that's starting to trouble me now. Um, and it's been troubling me for a wee while. So just let me clear the timeline to get everything else in. So what I'm looking for from you guys tonight is to obviously tell us what you think about Saturday's game, but there's also other bits and pieces sort of floating about. So we understand that there was a meeting today between the club's hierarchy and Peter Levin to sort of give him more of an understanding about what's been going on or what is going to happen. Uh, right, hang on, just let me... Right, got to find that, got to put that in there. Uh, where's Richard? Right, let me grab Richard. Where are you, dear boy? Richard, Richard. There we go, there's Richard. That's Richard in. And then there's the last thing to go in. And it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. What have I done with it? There it is. Right, that's everything in. Good job. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so tell us what you think. And what's your thoughts on potentially Jimmy Talene coming in in June? Or will he? I'm saying nothing. <laughs> Match stats. 56% possession to us, 44% to Dundee. We had 12 shots in total, of which only five were on target. And I keep saying it. I don't think we win enough corners during 90 minutes. Again, at home, we should be achieving many more corners than just three. Overall, our set pieces are poor. 250 successful passes to their 185, 54 passes in the final third, 556 touches overall, of which 21 were in Dundee's 18-yard box. Overall, we won 10 tackles in the game. So those are the match stats. Right, I'm going to get Richard on first, and then I'm going to bring you guys in. So Richard and I discussed the split, whether we should be looking over our shoulders at Ross County, etc. And this scenario with Jimmy Tulane. So welcome back to ABTV, Richard Wilkinson. 
Hi, mate. It's great to see you as always. Thank you so much for jumping on. Okay, I'm going to start with a very simple question. So, we're going to probably have to wait another week before we get the split fixtures. It's looking more than likely two games at home, three away. But is there still a part of you, particularly after the Ross County result, huh. you're still looking over your shoulder? Well, I'm certainly, if I'm looking over my shoulder, I've got a big smile on my face after that result yesterday. I know that most dandies probably sitting there going, oh, but it's that kind of, oh, you know, I'm I'm so happy for Ross County, but obviously that puts them back in the in the mix in terms of, I, listen, I think we'll be fine. I think it just, it's, it's this unfortunate nature of like feeling like we're in just some sort of kind of holding pattern of, um, you know, we're not very good but we're also a little less awful than we were. I think the clean sheet of the weekend was, um, you know, was was good. I think that's a couple of clean sheets now. Um, if we could just get, you know, sort of firing and scoring a few goals. Um, you know, this Saturday, obviously the semi-final, I mean, don't think anybody's got any great expectations. It would be nice to go in there and, and cause a surprise. But as far as the league goes, I mean... It's still possible. I'd say it's unlikely, yeah. but you know, I think, I think we we're, we're, I think we're too good. But then I've said that about a number of occasions this season, and I've been very disappointed. So I think I think we'll be okay. But you know, I we're not out of the woods quite yet. If we can get those home wins, I think we'll be fine. Yeah. Okay, I've got to ask you about the new manager situation. So obviously it's been widely reported that Jimmy Tallinn is going to join us on the 1st of June. Now, they're using, let me say, excuses that he's waiting until after a certain game against Gothenburg. But there is a niggle, and it's just a slight niggle that I have that maybe he's waiting to see what happens to us first before he commits. Am I right to have that niggle? I don't think so. I think I think that's. Listen, I, I've I've spoken to and met my fair share of paranoid Don's fans across <laughs> the years who you know will find you know any sort of uh, all but this. I I would I mean again. Happily proven wrong. The the soap opera of Aberdeen Football Club, you know, is 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 it never fails to to surprise. If it's not done and dusted by now, that in terms of you know signed, sealed, delivered, I don't think you know. I think we would have moved on, and I think this whole kind of you know sort of holding pattern with waiting for him. I think we've got the right man. I think logic dictates in my brain of going, we've got him. We're doing the right thing about not announcing it up until such point as 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 uh, you know his team uh, are ready to, to to announce it from their perspective, mm. which is a, a noble. Yeah. Um, yeah. I I again I don't think there'll be any sort of kind of relegation clause pre pre agreement pre nup or whatever clause for a manager. Um, I think it's done. I think it's dusted. Um, I would be very surprised and shocked if it hadn't been. Um, and I don't think, I think this is just a sort of kind of, you know, I, I know you probably can't say the phrase Chinese whispers anymore, but just little fan um, sort of kind of, oh, this is why we're not doing this as well. Yeah, I think it's done and dusted. I think we just have to wait until, you know, a couple more weeks and, um, you know, be patient, have, keep the faith. Um, and fingers crossed we have got him, because if we haven't, then, then there's a whole other conversation taking place. <laughs> Brilliant. Mate, thank you so much, as always, for jumping on. It's great to see you. No worries, fella. Look after yourself. And, Will do. Uh, yeah, stand free. And you, mate. Speak to you soon. Cheers. Ta-da. Thank you, Richard. Always got plenty to say. Right, let's start opening it up to you and see how we're all doing tonight. A Huntsy came on first of all with a simple <laughs> Gordon Keith Ritchie. Hi Gordon. Poor game. We need to take our chances when on top and get more points on board and finish the season as strong as possible and get sorted for next season. Scott Farquhar. Hi Scott. Evening dandies. Well, looks like we are back in the race for survival after Saturday's horror show. 
Just hope our new gaffer wasn't watching. Some of them, as I know, who I'd be punting straight out. Richard Mickey McMillan. Hi, Richard. How you doing? Any news on the meeting? Don't know, mate. We do not know. Graham Gibber said, fair play to Don Cowie. But that's enough. Barry Cool's on to say good evening, everybody. As is Angela Hamilton. She's hoping everybody is well. She said, I'm so over this season. Can we just pretend it's over and start again? Barry Cole came back to say, first half okay, second half rubbish. Zero plan B. Uh, Neil 709 how you doing? He's wished everyone a good evening. Barry came back to say, we need to have a right go at Celtic on Saturday. We do, we have to. Huntsey came back to say 35 points was poor showing so far. Grey Pilgrim is being, com is being very confident ahead of Saturday. He says, Scottish Cup win coming up. Like your style, fella. Duncan Wright is here. Hi, Duncan. I hope you're well. Uh, poor game on Saturday. The second half was just so dire to watch. I just hope we have a go at Celtic. Please don't park the bus and hope. Uh, John Morris says, wow, nice one. Good luck to the members. So we'll be doing that very soon. Very, very soon. Um, giving four tickets to the semi-final away in the next few minutes, courtesy of Craig International. Um, so hang about. It is uh, my or our way of saying thank you to those who signed up to the membership scheme here on ABTV. Uh, John Grant is on. Hi, John. How are you, fella? We look pretty poor. Defence looked pretty ropey. Midfield offered very little and easily bossed off the ball. I would also like a wee bit of dig, physicality and height in the team. We've been missing that for so long. We've been missing those who like to have a dig. Who like, you know, I'm not... Okay, I'm going to put this carefully. I'm going to say this carefully. Because I know, obviously, in the modern game, you've got to be really careful. But I don't have an issue with players, you know, sort of having a little dig in the ribs or standing on toes, like what we used to do. Um, I know you've got to be really careful. I know VAR is kicking about, so it makes it nearly impossible to do it, or more importantly, to get away with it. Um, which I think, again... It's just killed the spirit of the game, if I'm being honest. Just to thrive on the physicality. I'm sure most of you from my generation would agree. Uh, Barry Cole said Clarkson should have scored, yeah. He just didn't get it right, did he? Didn't get his body shape right. Um, John Moore came back to say, poor performance overall. Why can't we try two strikers? He just seems to huff and puff every week. Hasn't been a 90-minute performance this season. Ewan Grant is here. Hi, Ewan. I hope you're well. Uh, Dundee did very well to blunt our play in the second half and we didn't respond. Sadly, the Ross County result drags us into it again. Oh, Barry Cole has suggested for the split it could be three home games and two away. But I think, Barry, if we go by the trend of fixtures prior to the split, I think that's how they work it. Hence why... I think it will be three away games. But I could be completely wrong. And you could be completely right. You probably are. Uh, Scott Robertson says, says it all, Ali, that Dundee, a squad full of journeymen, loan players and young lads make the top six. To think of the money we've spent on that squad and we serve up that dross was a disgrace. Very difficult to argue with you, Scott. Uh, Graham Gibber said, decided on the bus home, that's me for this season, as players put in no effort to win the match. Ross County probably spoiled that now and we will have to suffer more misery. So Barry thinks it will be Hibs and County away, Livy, Motherwell and St Johnston at home. David Gold has come on to wish everyone a good evening. Great Pilgrim has said two games are a must win. County and Saints will be okay. Barry Cool's reminding everybody that Ruby will be back soon. I think, you know, I'm, I must admit, there was a part of me that was hoping he would get part of Saturday's game. Because I think if he's fully fit, he should start against Celtic. Uh, Ange Jameson has said, hi Angie. Um, 
Admit second half was in particular... Uh, yeah, sorry. So Peter Levin said, admits that second half was in particular disappointing, yet the most he can do is put Duncan on. Should change two up top, get Esther on, starting to wonder if it is Cormac <laughs> making the subs. Uh, Graham Klein. Hi, Graham. I hope you're well. Um, can you drop me a DM, please, mate? Uh, with the hurting described by Levy, uh, Levin, hopefully they can slap out of that ASAP with County bound to be upbeat with the win against them yesterday. It's back into a battle. Uh, Barry Cole is reminding everybody that Elfsburg drew their latest game with Hammer Bay 0-0. And Graham Klein has said he really hopes that Tallinn can get here sooner rather than later. Um, Alexander Wallace has said, hope Dante is in on Saturday. Well, I, I have to be honest, Alexander. I think he will be, because I think he'll take the place of the obviously suspended Graham Shinney. So, I think he will. I don't know what's happened to Killian Phillips. Um, I must admit, I quite like this lad. And I don't really know why he's not playing. He's not even getting a sniff. So I just don't know because I think his physicality could help us on Saturday. So the two of them together could really help us, I think. Because to have the height and the physicality in the centre of the park could make all the difference. Barry Cooler said, I would think Ellsberg would want it sorted sooner. I completely agree. Uh, Graham Gibber said, need new manager now. Squad needs reassessment and I want that done now, not next season. Yep. David Golder said, too easily bullied off the ball, never finding space when in attacking positions, wasteful at set pieces, lack of urgency overall, the story of our season, disjointed and unbalanced squad. Scott is here. Hi, Scott. How are you doing? June may be... Uh a bit late for Tallinn, but he'll be watching our games now if he's going to be our next manager. I agree. Ewan Grant came back to say, in other news affecting us, Lewis Ferguson has blown his ACL badly. Poor Loon, out of the Euros and a big money move off the table. Yeah, I don't know if you saw that, but unfortunately Lewis it, uh, did his cruciate ligament and is now facing major surgery. The poor lad. Um... But I'm sure that you'll all join with me in wishing him nothing but a speedy recovery. Nicola Beaton is here. Hi, Nicola. I hope you're okay. I'm going to drop you a note soon. Uh, why does he want to wait until the start of June? If they've started their season, surely it doesn't matter when he leaves. Again, another good point. Graham Klein came back to say, question for all. How much do you think Tallinn would need for a squad revamp? And how much is Dave Cormack willing to back it up? Graham Gibb is wishing Lewis Ferguson all the very best. Graham Barron is here. Hi, Graham. How are you doing? Um, he's wishing everyone a good evening. Poor second half and we were lucky to escape defeat. I'll take the point. Trust Rangers to lie down to county and bring them back into the mix. Stand free. Uh, Graham Pilgrim has said, two soft yellow cards for Shinny was not cool. But you know what? That, you know... That's, for me, that's it's just Graham. Oh, dear. It's just, you know, the, the, the second one in particular. Just no need, fella. No need, you know. John Grant came back to say, I don't think Jimmy will be here until Elfsburg have a new management team in position. Yeah, I agree with that as well. But hopefully they're working on it. Mark Robertson has said, playing devil's advocate, but could Shinny's red card be a blessing in disguise? The midfield has not been operating all season and wondering if this could help rather than hinder. Mm -hmm. Right. There's plenty more still there, so I'll get to it in a minute. But first, let's see who's going to win these Scottish Cup semi-final tickets. So let's remind you, on Saturday, we have our Scottish Cup semi-final against Celtic at Hamden. Don't forget, it kicks off at 1230 so, are you ready? I've put the names into a spinning wheel. There it is. And let's spin it. And let's see who name comes out of the wheel. Oh, who is it? Who is it? 
It is John Grant. John, many, many congratulations. You have won four Scottish Cup semi-final tickets. And I can tell you that you'll be sat in the South Stand Lower um, area P1, which I think is almost right beside the, uh, the tunnel. Uh, you'll be in seats 19 to 22 in row Z. And those tickets come courtesy of my sponsor, Craig International. So what you need to do now, John, is just DM me, get in touch, and then I'll arrange for you to get those tickets ahead of Saturday. All right? Many congratulations, mate. Absolutely delighted for you. Right. John Moore came back to say, playing for 10th this season to avoid the playoff. Great having a few clean sheets, but we don't look like scoring. Our attacking play is poor. Bojan feeding on scraps, but still looks off it. He does. John Moore has said, we've got a tough run in ahead. Neil709 came back to say, Bojan needs help. And all the best, Lewis, top loon, Shinny didn't help the cause. DJ has said the club needs a full clear out and start again. Can't see a good season next season. Sugarland is here. Hi, Sugarland. Over the past 20 seasons, the average points for playoff spot is 34.4 points. Nice. Levine Baxter's on. She's at a complete loss. Barry Cole came back to say, thank you, Barry. Got that. Oh, where are we going? Where are we going? Where are we going? Ah, it's half time with Elfsburg. Okay, thank you. Got you, got you. Uh, got you. Uh, Kevin Maynard said, This weekend is massive. Would like us to take the same approach as Ross County did against Rangers and have a right go. I'd rather get beat having a go than some of the drivel we've had to endure this season. I'm totally with you with that one. Just have a go. My God. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. Alan S has said, would like to see Sokla start with Bojan on Saturday and have a go. As I thought he was our best strike, as, as I thought it was our best strike pairing against Rangers earlier in the season. Andrew Jameson said, on the plus though, Ali, we look much better defensively now. We do, Angie, we certainly do. It looks like Hammerby have taken the lead against Elfsburg. The Mad Ferret has said, I'm working on Saturday, so we'll miss the semi-final, which could be a godsend. Uh, he came, David Gould came back to say, Ryan Duncan could use a loan move next season, I think. Not sure he's the standard required. Yeah, he just didn't get into the game when he came on at all, did he? Uh, Fraser Garden is on. Hi, Fraser. Greetings all. I think the club needs to be careful not to think we are safe yet. Get Jimmy in now and let the players have a Hamden Cup semi to show what they're all about. <laughs> Ryan Murray has said, this is getting silly now if a deal has been done. Just get it announced. <laughs> oh, you guys are so funny. Some of you are actually commiserating John Grant on winning the Cup semi-final tickets. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Oh, you guys. But also, <laughs> in equal measure, a lot of you are wishing him many congratulations. Um, Stuart Malcolm said, as long as we have a go on Saturday, that will do me. You just never know. Uh, Scott Luckhard makes a very good point and again I, I brought this up does Talene join if we get relegated so there could be a clause in the contract there could to say whether we go down or not he still becomes our new manager there could be I don't know thank you Barry I'll get to that later <laughs> Graham Klein said, Talene sacked by Ellsberg. They're currently losing 1-0. Uh, Kevin Mina said, go with Miofsky, Sokola and Juke. It's a free hit, so we might as well go for it. Uh, right, how long have we done? Oh, half an hour. Right, so I think we'll call it a night. Um, guys, thank you so much. Uh, as always, loved having you on. I hope you've enjoyed the show tonight. Uh, John Grant, once again, many congratulations to you. 
don't forget to get in touch um, so that I can arrange those tickets to get to you. Um, so look, I am planning this week again to do a number of shows. So look out tomorrow because I'm hoping there will be a show tomorrow. Um, so keep an eye out on my social media pages. Um, no matter what, what I'm looking to do is a sort of a, a build up to the semi-final most nights. Just sort of reminisce about games gone by. Just get your own memories of cup semi-finals. Um, yeah, and just your general thoughts overall. So enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you so much for being with us again. And I will hopefully see you tomorrow. Stand free. <laughs>